So let's get right over into it. So this week on the Midweek Wrestle War here, yo. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Cody First of all, I did not watch NXT two point All I know is people kept saying that the ladder matches were good. They had the who wins the advantage in the ladder match? They had Brawl Breaker versus Giant Gargano, and I think the other one was. I don't remember what the other ladder match was. But uh, I think, I like, I believe the Heels won. You know, uh, I think Black and Gold has the advantage in the. I, I don't know. But I believe that I watched NXT 2.0. It was all about Dynamite this past week. Dynamite in Atlanta, Georgia, from uh, December first, two to twenty twenty one. Jr. Cody is, Rose hometown. Cody Rose hometown, and of course you say, "Hey, remember Cody and the racism, y'all." So it's Wednesday night. You know what that means. Uh, Jr. is not here tonight because he's he's taking care of his uh, skin cancer condition. So we do wish him the best, don't we, Prime? Be nice. Sure we do. Yes, be nice. Uh, uh so uh we uh Tony Khan announced that Dece- on December fifteenth there will there'll be the winter is coming edition of Dynamite and it will be Hangman Page taking on Brian Danielson for the AEW World Championship. Did you did you see the logo? No, I didn't. The logo definitely looked like it says Wang Man. You said the Ace looks like a W. Ah, oh. I didn't see that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So now we we we're going back on the Brian Danielson taking out all members of Dark Order who represent that state. Because this we're in Atlanta, we have the Dark Angels, Allen Five. So. He, uh, it's him and uh, Brian Dale sitting there for, uh, a relatively quick matchup. You know, uh, Brian Dale takes him out with a knee bar, I think it is. So, uh, you know, just real quick, how convenient is it that they just been in every Dark Order's hometown? Yes, I was to say, that is convenient. I think, I think the storyline was well thought out. Because it obviously looked like it was supposed to be, supposed to be for Max, uh, John Moxley, but obviously the you know the, you know the issues and stuff like that. So he gonna be in the matchup. So, but uh, I don't know, man. It's 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 getting it's becoming good stuff. <clears throat> so uh, he beats him. He beats him with the knee bar. And um, next week it is a Dark Order member from Long Island. And uh, this is going to be John Silver and the Alex Wilson from Long Island also. So, uh, Brian Davis is talking shit in the ring. And Page was coming out to the ring, but he said, uh, John Silver says, hey, I, uh, you can't hit him right now until winter is coming, but I can. So, he tries to go attack um, Brian Davis. And Brian Davis, you know, gets out. So, next week, Brian Davis is taking on John Silver. That should be a dope match. Uh, we have Miro in heaven, it looks like. White lights and everything that he says, my God, the line has been drawn. I was looking for love, but now I only have fear. And then, uh, he makes a threat like to God to come there and destroy everybody up in heaven. I was like, my God, Miro, what kind of, you know, character that have I walked into because it is brilliant um we have CM Punk taking on Lee Moriarty uh so for once again Punk gave Lee Moriarty more time than he deserved to be in the ring with CM Punk and he's not he's not squashing people that he should squash uh I think it maybe maybe playing up into a storyline to be honest with you um it's definitely a storyline yeah because they're like, there's people he should just be squashing. Well, then MJF comes out, and MJF... Uh, but CM Punk is also not a squasher, too. Say what? CM Punk is not a squasher, though. 
You're right. He comes with a microphone. He's uh, just like Brian Danielson. Huh? Just like Brian Danielson. Both of those are not squashers. They both just wear you down. Gotcha, yeah. He has to cut the music. He says, PG Punk, good to see you. Uh, Last week, you were uh, disappointed in me. And it's it's interesting because I am proud of you. Uh, He said, it takes a lot of you to call yourself the best in the world when you're struggling to beat QT Marshall. I'm like, yeah. And Lee Moriarty. He said, but these days you move, uh, you're more interested in getting the pants off Britt Baker. You're not seeing punk. You're one punk chump. Uh, I heard people um, try to rival that line with sunny days. It doesn't. So... It, 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 I mean, it was a decent line, but I'm like, it's not gonna, it's not gonna beat that. Um, see, folks, you got the nerve to come out here uh, with those Larry Davis pajamas. He said, "QT Marshall and Lee Moriarty are both better than you, and you know it. So shut up, bring a little needle dick in here, and uh, to, to get the fight going." Now, we. Never got a chance to talk about this last week. But did you see their first promo from last week? I did. What did you think of that? I thought it was great. Fantastic. I think that's one of the, one, one of the better things AEW did this year. And they gave it time, too. Oh, yeah, they gave it time. They gave it time. It was just, it, it was just like, it, it was great. Like, you know you wanted to see MJF and CM Punk finally go at it. Well, now you finally got to see them going at it. And him even call him the less famous Miz. I was like, oh, my God, that is so true. Um, <clears throat> MJF is saying, you know, you need more than I need you to see in public. Don't worry, I'm going to show you a real professional. A, he's going to win the the. the Dynamite Diamond Ring Battle Royal in Long Island. He's not going to win it because he already won it twice in a row. They will give it to somebody else. I think he'll win it. I think that'll be like his championship until he gets a championship. What are you talking about? The, the that's Diamond a, win? The ring, is like a, the ring is like a part of his gimmick, so I think he'll he'll win it. You know, he, he, he might. You just never know. The man. ring is literally his gimmick. The ring is like William Regal's brass knuckles. Yeah, that's a good way to so think. It. Yeah, I think I think he'll win it. What happened after that? Um, oh, so CM Punk, oh, he talks about also CM Punk's dog in the back, and he better not bring Larry down. He said, if you don't stop all the yapping in the back, uh, I'll put Larry to sleep. CM Punk ain't like that line. He goes and runs to the ring, but then Warlow cuts him off. So I'm like, don't get to MJF yet, but... Uh, they can, um, you know, say like build to it slowly and bring out Warlow, you know, take on CM Punk because that should be a pretty good matchup, also. Uh, I missed the backstage stuff with, uh, uh, what was it Jamie Hayter and, uh, and Dr. Brent Baker? Okay, this, this segment made no sense. Adam Cole was coming down to join the broadcast booth. He comes down to the ring, makes his whole entrance, comes back up, and then uh, he's met there with Orange Cassidy with his hands in his pocket. And then here comes Young Bucks trying to sneak up behind him, and he turns around, and he starts giving him these little, like, shin kicks. But then Adam Cole just low blows him, and then they start acting like they're going to give him little soft super kicks, and they finally give him a super, you know, the double super kick. And I was just like, what did this... Say we even serve. What was his purpose? I guess just to get them all on the show. Oh. That sucks. Yeah, I've said that stuff really just sucks. Uh, Warlow destroyed AC Adams. The Gun Club, God, Billy and Colton take on Sting and Darby, Darby Allen. This is for Sting to come back. Obviously, uh, I, I feel his, you know, makeup he had on. And um, this was a, actually was a pretty decent matchup, you know, but Billy You Gunn, say that for every Steam match, like you're surprised. 
I you know I am surprised by how Sting is wrestling these days. I'm actually surprised that Billy Gunn is like damn near sixty years old, still looking at Jack. Well, they didn't say it was all natural. Fair. Fair. Wouldn't it be so if his nickname was the natural by like Dustin Rose? <laughs> oh shit. They call him the natural. No. I I wouldn't but uh so like it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good matchup. I think uh you know Darby does a, sh- a a shoot outside the ring. A dive through Rose actually looks good. Comes up with the head at one point, and then um they come back into the ring, and then uh Colton uh gets the uh, Sting Scorpion death drop, and then Sting pins it for the win. So there you have it. Uh Jericho was backstage with uh Ox Barbarez and then Two Point and. Then ain't gonna see a jump him because he was saying that he wants to come out to help Eddie Kingston uh, last week, but he just I said to, to, to take out 2.0 and make a point. Well, they beat him down, hit him with a chair in the face, and they take out Jericho. So there you have it. And then going back to like the pointless rumors and stuff, we have Team Taz uh, or Taz on commentary. Leo Rush comes out because Taz has to do Scott Steiner man and saying that Team Taz has like a hundred percent, a hundred ten percent chance of winning. The, the the diamond uh, diamond ring battle royal. Well, uh, Leo Rush says that means I have zero percent chance. Well, I'm going to make my name known there. And then as he walk up to him, Dante Martin comes out, which confirming that Dante Martin has joined Team Taz. And I was just like, well, either which is coming, give me a Leo Rush versus Dante Martin matchup, or had this thing you know pay off a different way. Or he could just be faking. That true, but I mean, but that you know, a lot of people are dead, but I mean, that's a, that's a good idea. Uh, the T the, the TBS Women's Tournament Quarterfinal Match. Uh, Chris Stanley taking on Ruby Soho. This matchup was good after the break, after like the the, the Poison Rana came and then and then the Spike Rana, uh, and it. Sat and kicked out of that. Well, I was like, okay, we really get in the gear now, but it kind of, you know, uh, the finish to me kind of felt flat, to be honest with you. Because uh, kind of just like 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 the roll up, like she she's got the best of Chris Stanley. I didn't see the story you trying to tell, but I was just like, no, I kind of wanted a little bit more out of that matchup. Did you see that? Ever ma- seen that matchup? I did not see the whole thing, but. I think with Chris Stanton, they still want to have her still be strong. Uh-huh. Rather than, like... Because she just saw for the title, like, what, a few months ago? Oh. So I think they want her strong for the... for the. They still want her strong, at least. Yeah. Well, well, well. It is time for this Atlanta street fight. Cody taking on Andrade El Igolo. Well, I'll say this. The reaction for Cody in Atlanta was more mixed than it was in other places. And Cody says, well, since I got a mixed house tonight of fans that like me and fans that don't like me, I'm going to do whatever I can to make sure that the fans like me. And boy, did that not work out. So before, as Cody is coming out, doing the whole thing, Andrade rushes uh, to Cody. Did and it? It seems like uh, I don't know if the excitement got you know he lost his foot, but Arn Anderson, Arn Anderson fell. And now the stage they got was not as as big as the usual stages, like because God, you could have fell that ramp. You could like if it was like one of the ramps, like one of the WrestleMania ramps, you could have really felt did some damage. But he fell. And the other guy that was part of uh, with, with Andrade helped him out the hole and started beating him up. Did you see it when Arn Anderson fell? I did see that, and I've also seen the footage from the crowd, which is even funnier. <laughs> I no, once I found out he was okay, I laughed. Nah, I laughed first. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like you know, some going like it's like if Ric Flair wrestles and he and he gets hurt wrestling, like. You 80. You know, like you. I'm laughing first if you get hurt. Because you know you shouldn't be doing that. 
Okay, so which fall between him, Tully, and Jake Roberts has it for you? Oh, this is the funniest one because he. This was so unexpected. At least, like Jake knew he was about to take a bump that yeah. he just kind of wasn't prepared for it. Gotcha. Tully jumped. Tully jumped, but uh, Aaron was literally just minding his business and then looked to the side. And, oh, I'm looking at the ceiling. <laughs> Like, look, he just t- t- took a one step down, so they start fighting. They, they, they fight into the crowd. Andrade hits Cody with this trash can, right? And meanwhile, you're sitting there thinking, like, okay, because when Cody comes back up, there's this, like, weird pasty glue on his back. We know what it is for now, seeing the whole matchup, but when it first happened, I was like, what the fuck was in that trash can that's on Cody's back? Like, that's gross. Even to the point, Taz like, yo, what is on this dude's back? And I was like, yo, can you take a pause, wipe, 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 wipe this stuff off? Because we didn't know what it we, we didn't know what it was for. So he's still in there, uh, fighting the crowd. Uh, then they get back to the ring. A uh, dry takes off Cody's weight belt, uh, kind of beats him, then tosses it to, to the crowd. Uh, the person doesn't toss it back this time; they actually keep it. So, oh, a, a try to goes and pulls a chain out. Went into the ring and tossed it to the ring. He swung it at Cody, but Cody ducked. And the cha- the fans was like, we want tables. I was like, okay, well, I know they're going to probably get him eventually. Uh, then we, we have a Cody trying to spring off the top rope to give a, a Cody c- cutter, but then uh, Andrade kicks out. And then, um, let's see, that's what we had in the ring also. Uh, at the end, of, towards the end of the matchup, because there's, there's a lot of stuff that happened in this matchup, when it came to, uh, you know, Dry doing the double knees to Cody in the chairs, or when he tried to do his moonsault, Cody to do the chair up in his face. It was a lot, it was a lot of spots that, you know, I, I did not write down in my notes. But Cody is on the top rope, and Andrade is uh, up there also. But then this hood, this hooded figure comes in with a bandana over her mouth. And I'm like, who is this? It's Brandy. And I was just like, why does she need a disguise? The only to reason no I, reaction. Because of the reaction. Because no, I'm saying to no reaction. She came out. Exactly. She, I mean, I mean, it, it, had like, it, it had like a slight pop. It wasn't it wasn't nothing better than it that. It was like a uh, oh, it's brand it, It's cold, okay. yeah. She she comes out there and lights the it, it doing lighter fluid and sets this tape on fire. So Cody does a reverse suplex to Andrade and Cody Whoa. eats the huh? Whoa. No, he did not. Well, what did he do? Cody put himself through a table. I was about to say that. Cody took the brunt of that table. He took all that I, table. I think it was for him to take it the whole time because that stuff on his back was for the tape. It was kind of just like, so were you supposed to like just take a back bump the whole time or, or what? Exactly. You know, I didn't I didn't think of it like and, that. And then let's be honest with you. Cody doing the reverse super kind of, that no the move that he did just don't even make sense to do that to a table anyway. Exactly. So yeah. You forgot the other you forgot when he uh went under the ring and he pulled a uh a kendo stick, then he pulled a, a sledgehammer, then he pulled a golden shovel and smiled at the camera. Oh, See, that golden shovel thing also bothered the hell out of me. I'm like, yo, you guys, stop this WWE shit, dog. Stop the WWE shit. Like, you know, it it, it was fine the, uh, the other time when he was teasing the pedigree and didn't do it. But now you just take it too far. I was like, yo, bro, like, seriously. We we get it. And we don't need to keep seeing it on TV. And once again, Cody tried to, he is trying to force and pop this reaction. It's not working. So after this table spot goes down, Cody is still on fire. But I don't think he, he throws fit. on Andrade. Yeah, and he goes over to pin Andrade. But I think when he pinned him with his arm, Andra- his arm was still on fire, and Andrade, Andrade was kind of like trying to put it out because his boot was still on fire. Like and Cody still had fire on him because you know he probably didn't feel it because he had that gel on. So, but that was, uh, 
If you that was completely who unnecessary. If you would have told me who would have took the first uh, flame and table spot, it definitely would not have been Cody Rhodes. No. No, but that that was so highly unnecessary. I was like. Okay, you have a T pain in the crowd. You're doing the golden shovel. You're doing a flaming table spot. Like all this stuff is not going to get you over. People do not want to cheer you anymore. And he is trying his damnness to get people to ask have some sympathy behind him. What you mean? Don't you remember 1961? Uh, oh. Yes, I forgot. Because remember, people told me that, that, that Cody into racism. Just in case you forgot, he he went to go hug T Pain just to show you. I know T Pain. What's that song you do? Uh, uh, uh. I, I don't know what songs you do, but I know you're a rapper, right? You're a singing rapper. What you what you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, since Snoop Dogg couldn't be there, he's like, well, we'll get the next best thing. We'll, we'll get we'll get T Pain. Snoop Dogg not on the show no more. So they replaced Snoop Dogg I mean, because with, with when they, they recorded, the, the I, I think Snoop Dogg was uh. His mom was having health issues, so they had to replace him with somebody. So I said, well, I mean, T Pain is a good is a good guy to replace him with. So, but I mean, like you know, he just trying to get pop, just trying to get a pop from from that new that, that new episode. Yeah, they should have T Pain do a uh, do a Cody remake. <laughs> no, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Wrestling has more than one royal family. <laughs> Yeah, no, we we, we yeah we can. Uh, <laughs> Dynamite gets the win for me this week, obviously. But Cody won above and beyond of, of stupidity to, to, to try to get to try to get the fan vote, and I don't think it did any good at all. What him and Brandy was doing didn't get them a lick of anything good. Definitely not at all. And then people talk about look at Cody's back, look at all the stuff he sacrificed. Nobody told him to do that. No, he, he did it that he, wasn't he needed. To in the, first of all, you build up to a flaming table spot. You don't have it on a random match on a random dynamite where you only been feuding for a week. Yeah, you I, don't I thought need Moxley a or, table for that. I thought Moxley or Omega would have been the first people to do a flaming table spot. I was, you know, I was just like, if it's warranted, go ahead and do it. But since it wasn't, it was completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. Oh, that's Cody Rose's nickname. Completely unnecessary. Oh, 